Hey guys, welcome to this review of the brand new Yongnuo 85mm f1.8 for Sony E-mount. Now some of my regular subscribers might be thinking, Dave, didn't you do the video on this lens not that long ago? And you would be right, except that was a larger comparison video comparing up this lens to the Sony, the Viltrox and Samyang's 85mm offerings as well. But that was quite a substantial comparison and was about a half an hour long video. And I appreciate there's probably some people out there that don't want to sit through a half an hour video. Although if that does sound more like your cup of tea, I will leave a link to it up here so you can go and check that out. But this video is going to be in focused entirely on the Yongnuo and how it performs. So what are we looking at here? Well, hopefully by now you've worked out that this is a fast 85mm prime lens for full frame cameras which is a very versatile type of lens that has found a lot of popularity, especially with portrait shooters. Now, what makes this lens stand out from the other lenses on the market? Well, the first and foremost has to be the price. Yongnuo are going to be retailing this for $270 within the US. Now, I say they're going to be because it's not actually currently available outside of the Asian market due to supply and demand issues caused by the pandemic. And I also appreciate $270 to some people is a lot of money to spend on a lens. But to put it into relative terms as to just how cheap this is, the Sony 85 f1.8 is double the price at over $540. Even what was the cheapest 85 with autofocus before this came out, the Viltrox, is $400. This lens is arguably so cheap that I'll bet you could buy this lens brand new for less than you could find most 85 mils second hand. But obviously, this is a very famous expression, you get what you pay for. So the question is, what are we not getting from what we're not paying for this lens? Because obviously, a budget lens like this isn't going to rival flagship level lenses that cost four or five times as much money. If you came here hoping to see such a thing, then I suggest you book an appointment with a psychiatrist. However, don't switch off just yet because overall this is a very impressive lens. The build quality is nothing to write home about, but it is better than I was expecting. I've reviewed some cheaper Yongnuo lenses in the past before, and the whole lens was entirely plastic, as in it sounded hollow inside. This still has an outer plastic finish, which does feel pretty cheap. It's not high-grade plastic like you find on some lenses, but there's definitely some substance underneath it, which I imagine is a metal chassis. So the whole lens feels pretty rigid, even though the outer skin feels pretty tacky. Same with the manual focus ring. It's got a rubberized grip to it, which is a very nice feature because it's more comfortable to hold. But it just feels and sounds like a toy. And the buttons and the switches, again, feel clunky and clicky, not smooth like you find on higher grade lenses. However, the inclusion of these switches and buttons was a big surprise to me. An AF-MF selector switch I much prefer having on the lens rather than having to delve into the camera's menus when I want to jump into manual focus. And these customizable program buttons are only really ever found on genuine Sony lenses. So to find it on a third party lens was quite a surprise and it even works, which is better. There's no weather sealing on this lens, however, so obviously it's going to be susceptible to dust and moisture if you are shooting in harsher conditions. The closest it's got to weather sealing is this little rubber bung here that covers the USB-C port that's on the side of the barrel. Now that port is actually for updating the firmware on this lens, so you can plug the lens straight into your camera, download latest firmware from Yongnuo, and install it straight onto the lens, which incidentally is something I've done to this lens since that comparison video. On the comparison video, it was running the original firmware. Since shooting that, Yongnuo had released some new firmware, which I've subsequently installed. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the firmware is supposed to fix because all the press release is in Chinese, uh, but I was hoping that it would improve the autofocus. For those of you who have already seen that comparison video, that doesn't appear to be the case, but we'll get more onto that shortly. So overall, the build quality is about what you can expect from a $270 lens. The only criticism I have for the build quality that I think should have been improved is the lens hood. The hood itself, thin plastic, no grooves, no felt on the inside. Again, as you would expect, 
it's surprisingly deep. It's like half the depth of the lens itself. It's probably one of the deepest hoods I've seen on an 85 mil lens. My only complaint with it is the locking mechanism. If you put it on and turn it a quarter turn until it hits a stop, it's not actually locked in place. To get it to lock into place though, it does take a bit more force than I would ideally like. I kind of feel like I'm gonna snap the lens hood sometimes. Now let's get on to the autofocus since I've already briefly mentioned it. So this lens does have autofocus. It has a DSM motor, which I have no idea what those letters stand for, but I'm going to assume the S stands for either sonic or silent because that's pretty much how I would describe the autofocus within this lens. Even if you're recording video with internal audio from the camera's microphones, you can barely pick up any audible noise from this AF drive. And in terms of the autofocus performance, it's quite a mixed bag. It's probably the most polarizing lens in terms of AF performance that I've ever seen. And incidentally, this does expand slightly from my comparison video because following me making that comparison video, I saw a Chris Frost's review of this lens and he pointed out the lens did suffer from a lot of uncertainty and hunting when trying to lock onto a still subject, which I didn't find to be the case. After a little bit more digging into it, what I've actually found is that if you use this lens in single shot autofocus, then it does seem a little bit unsure of itself when it's trying to lock onto a subject. It'll pretty much always rack the focus further than it needs to and then pull it back every single time. However, if you switch into AFC, continuous autofocus, it's so much more sure of itself. It's able to immediately lock straight onto a subject. And the speed of the rack and how quickly it can adjust the focus is pretty impressive in continuous as well. And if you're shooting still subjects, the autofocus performance is very, very good. It nails focus most of the time. However, if you're shooting a moving subject, that's kind of where it falls on its arse slightly. It can lock onto a subject, but it seems to be if the subject's moving, there's quite a delay between maybe the camera recognizing that the subject is out of focus and the lens being able to react to what the camera's asking it to do. Which is a shame because if this lens was able to react faster, given the rack speed of the autofocus, it would be pretty good for action sorts of subjects. But with that reaction delay, anything that's moving, it just becomes too inconsistent. And in terms of image quality, again, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Image sharpness from this lens is like nothing I've seen before in a budget lens. At f1.8, wide open, the center of the frame is almost razor sharp, and even the corners are pretty sharp as well. In terms of out and out image sharpness at wide open apertures, this lens is sharper than even the Sony, the Samyang, or the Viltrox. And at f2.8, you've pretty much got razor sharpness all the way across the frame. So the image sharpness is damn impressive for such a budget lens, but obviously there's more to image quality than just out and out sharpness. The chromatic aberration of this lens is quite noticeable, but it's not a complete deal breaker, I don't think. It's slightly worse than the Sony and the Viltrox at f1.8 in the center. When you stop down to f2.8, it's pretty much cleared up. This lens does have quite heavy pincushion distortion, although in its defense, it's no worse than the distortion on, say, the Viltrox. And realistically, I generally find you don't notice distortion unless you're shooting scenes that have a lot of what are supposed to be straight edges in them. So no, it's not flagship rivaling in terms of overall image quality, but I'll tell you what, for $270, the image quality overall is bloody impressive compared to lenses that are twice the price, like the genuine Sony or Samyang offerings. With image quality like this, this lens should easily hold the accolade for the best budget 85mm lens on the market. However, that autofocus is a bit of a problem at the moment. If you're shooting static subjects, then without doubt, this lens is the best bang for buck by a country mile. But if you're ever shooting subjects that are going to be moving, the autofocus I find is just too inconsistent. It's all well and good having a very sharp lens. This could have the most fantastic image quality of any lens ever made. But if your shots are out of focus, it kind of becomes irrelevant. 
Hopefully Yongnuo will bring out new firmware very soon to help improve the autofocus further and I will re-review this lens as and when they do so. But for now, that's it for this video, guys. If you're interested in checking this lens out, there will be a link to it in the description box down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful and you haven't already, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and then hopefully I will see you in the next video.